Aha! Hi everyone and welcome to Dr. Gentile's lectures. Previously I covered rounding. Today I am going to go over proportions. So why proportions are important? They are important because when it comes into dispensing medications to patient, let's say from a physician's office, they do need to know the amount of medication being dispensed with the correct dosage and the duration of time. It's also important for the nurses who works in a hospital or in a clinic to know exact amount of medication being dispensed. It also plays a critical point when it comes in to a pharmacy technician when they're receiving a prescription or the pharmacist him or herself when they're calculating the dosage for a particular patient. So what are proportions? Proportion, they're basically fractions. So they are a couple of components when it comes in to proportion. Number one, they are fraction and they are composed of three known and one unknown value. So let's say that fraction number one has A over B equal C over D. Now in a question, what happened is that we are given a value of A and we're given a value of B and value of C. So these three values, this one, this one, and this one, they're all three of them, they're known. We know what they are. D is the unknown, and the point of the proportion is to find out what is D. So that's what proportion helps us to do, is to find out the value. And there are certain condition. Number one is the units on the top for the fractions, so unit for A must match unit for C. And the same thing for bottom, unit for B must match unit for D. In addition to this condition, there must be only one unknown factor. So here we only have D as an unknown, and this is the only factor we do not know. So these are the two conditions that we must keep in mind when we are doing proportion. So let's take one example. One person has a bottle of a medication. A person has a, basically a bottle of medication that contains five tablets. So a patient comes in and he has five tablets in one bottle. How many tablets will you have if given four bottles? So let's work this things out. So we said there, these are fractions. So let's set the fraction first. So a person comes in and has one bottle of medication and inside that bottle have five tablets. So there are five tablets in one bottle. And let's do the equal sign. So the question is asking us to find how many tablets are inside four bottles. So where are we going to set four bottles? So we're going to set it in the bottom because we just mentioned that the units much, must match. So here we have bottles, so we must match it with bottles. So we have four bottles. So, and the unknown is basically number of tablets, so we're, we're, we're going to refer that as an X. So basically what we're doing right now is just solve for x. That's all what it is. So solve for x. So there are two ways of doing this. The first way that I always try to think about it, if it's like easy numbers like these, of course in real life numbers could be more difficult where sometimes you even need to use a calculator. But for example of this lecture, I'm making the numbers very simple so the lecture could be absorbed easily. So here, the first way I think about it is from one bottle to four, what happened over here from this step to this step? We basically, how did, so what I'm trying to say is how did we get one bottle to become four? Basically multiplying by four, 
right? So because if you multiply one bottle by four, you get four bottles. Same thing over here. So if I multiplied four with this and we got four bottles, so if I multiply four by five, then we're gonna have 20 tablets. The other way of doing this is basically the long way. So what do I do in this case? Basically, try to multiply. So multiply this with this and then this with this. So I say, first of all, so let's assume that the 20 doesn't exist over there. Let's say X times one bottle. So it's going to be X one bottle equal five tablets times four bottles. So five tablets and four bottles. So this is where we get right now. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna basically, because we're solving for X, so let me make this clear, it's an X. We're gonna divide by one bottle. So this one here also divide by one bottle. The reason why, because I'm trying to have these units, the bottle one cancels out. So we end up with tablets only and we solve for X. So bottle goes with bottle and then bottle goes with bottle as well. So five tablets, so this is a multiplication over here between these two, this is not an X, it's a multiplication. So five tablets times four, that's also equal to 20 tablets. So basically the same answer that I got early on. This is just a long way of doing it. This is just a fast forward, just looking at it, I know what the answer is. Of course, this is because the numbers are really easy. Uh, when it comes into a difficult math problem, this is, I think, even though it's a longer way, it's just the safest way of doing it. So let's move on to a second example to try to understand this proportion in a better way. Second example says, you have a prescription with a concentration, so we have a concentration of five gram per 100 ml. So the way I think about this before I proceed even is that I have a, a bottle, let's say I have a bottle of medication that contain, let's say, 100 ml. In this 100 ml, there are five gram of a medication. So there are five, so here we're putting five gram and this 100. So that's what a concentration of five gram and 100 ml means. What is the total in gram? So we're looking for a final answer in gram. This is important to keep in mind of the medication if the patient has 500 ml. So. We said early on we need to know the three factors so we can look for the fourth one. So what do we know? We know that five gram, they're in 100 ml. And the question is asking, we're gonna do the equal sign. What are the grams? So the grams are over here and we're gonna represent them with an X in 500 ml. Remember, it's very important to have the units match up if it's on the top or bottom. It's really important, and I want you to keep this in mind. So here we have a ml in the bottom and a ml, mil, a milliliter, milliliter on the bottom. So on the top, this X represents the gram in total when having 500 milliliter. So we're gonna do the two methods that I did early on, just because the number, they're really easy. So how can I make 100 ml go to 500? Basically multiplying by five. So if I multiply 100 ml by five, the answer is 500 ml. And it's the same thing over here. So this was multiplied by five to have 500 ml. So basically if I multiply this five by five, which the answer in this case, if I multiply it, it's gonna be 25 gram. And that's basically what the X is. And if I were to do this in the long way, just like we did over here, basically we're gonna be multiplying 
5 gram by, so 5 gram by 500 ml equal multiplying 100 ml by x, so 100 ml x. Now what I need to do is basically to divide by 100 ml both sides. The reason why is to cancel out and leave x alone and to cancel ml with ml over here. 500 multiply, so first of all, let's multiply these first. What is 5 times 500? So let me just, so over here, move this down here. So we have 100 in the bottom. And we have 5 gram times 500. So 5 times 5, it's 25. And we have two zeros. So now cancel 100, two zeros with two zeros. And the answer is 25 gram. Just like we did over here in this fastest step over here, where I multiplied it right away with 5. So these are the two ways of solving these problems. So now let's look into the third problem. So what if the units, what are, what if the units are actually different? So what if I have a unit on A, and the question is asking me for a different unit for C? So let's say I have gram, 100 milliliter, 500 milliliter, and here they're asking me maybe in kilogram, or let's say they're asking in milligram. So. What are we supposed to do? So there are two ways of doing that. You can, the easiest, the, the correct way that I think that everyone should do, sometimes I do the second way. The first way is basically to solve the question and solve for the unit available, then at the end, converting the units. That's the safest, the safest way that I think um, you should follow, which sometimes I don't. I just move into the second way of doing it because I think it's faster for me, but I'm gonna represent both ways and leave the choice to you. So, let's take this example. Patient takes one gram of a medication every day. So he takes one gram every day. How many milligrams, see? I'm asking milligram, but he takes a gram. Of this medication will the patient be receiving in two days? So, he takes one, gram in one day. We're gonna do the equal sign as usual. So how many milligrams, so I'm asking how many milligram over here in two days. And this is X by the way. So what I could do, the first way is basically not even think about the milligram. Just solve for the gram and the answer will be in gram. Once I get it in gram I can basically convert that to milligram. The other way of doing this, which was the second way that I do sometimes, and it's up to you if you want to follow this way, is basically to convert this gram to milligram right now so that you don't have to think of the final answer. So you don't have to basically convert to the final answer to anything else, just to keep it as milligram. So let's do this way first. So from one day to two days, just like we did the faster way, will be multiplying this by two because one day to two days will be two. So one times two equal two. So the X over here, if we multiply one gram, it's gonna be two grams, okay? So the answer, this is not the answer. This is not the final answer still. The question is asking what it's the final answer in milligram. So we have two grams. What I need to do is basically multiplying this, knowing that to convert this, I know that in one gram, because I want to cancel grams out, there is 1,000 milligram. So I can cancel this gram, cancel this gram. Two times 1,000 milligram equal 2,000 milligram. Okay, so this is the final answer right here. Now, let's move into the second way. So this is way number one. 
So this is way one, way two. What would be way two is basically to take this one gram and converting to a milligram. So basically one gram, just like I did over here, equal 1,000 milligram over one gram. Because 1,000, every one gram there is 1,000 milligram. So now I get to cancel the grams and one times 1,000 milligram equal 1,000 milligram. So what I did in this way two, the second way of doing this, so way one, way two, is basically that I convert the unit early on, so at the end I don't really have to think about the converting the units on the final answer. So now that I have 1,000, so let me separate, so what we have is, let's set this up, so 1,000, milligram, patient is taken in one day, one day. So how many milligrams, so X, he's taken in two days. Okay, so just like I said, one day going to two days is basically multiplying by two. So here if I multiply two by 1000 milligram, the answer or X, will be 2,000 milligram. So, two different ways of doing the same thing. So, this is it for this video for proportion. And if you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you for watching.